After an extended period of high anxiety, you might find yourself worrying about the very thoughts you have. The kind of thoughts I'm referring to here are intrusive or disturbing thoughts about subject matters that shock you over just the very fact that you had that particular thought. Typical intrusive thoughts often revolve around sex or confusion over sexual orientation, blasphemous thoughts, or acting out spontaneously in a violent manner towards loved ones. People who suffer from frequent intrusive thoughts say things like, I can't control them and they really scare me. What if a part of me wants to do this terrible thing I keep thinking about? What if it's a sign I'm losing control? I feel I have to suppress these thoughts or else they might take over. It's perfectly normal to start fearing for your sanity or to get upset when intrusive thoughts manifest. But you have to understand they're nothing more than the result of the elevated stress hormones and mental exhaustion that you're experiencing. The very fact that you're responding with anxiety to these thoughts proves that you're perfectly normal. You're not losing it, nor are you a bad person for thinking them. You're just suffering from the side effects of high anxiety. Thinking happens, and it's not who you are. A thought is just a thought, it's not a fact. The fact that you think something doesn't make it so, nor does it reflect on the person you are. Don't mistake the content of your thoughts for the person you are. These thoughts don't represent the real you. On average, we have about 50,000 thoughts every day. Many of these are bizarre and wacky. We all have them. The only difference is that when you're feeling highly sensitized, these thoughts really stand out and grab your attention. You then feel a jolt of fear like an electrical zap when you respond to them in horror. For example, driving the kids to school, you might have an out of the blue thought of, what if I just swerved into this oncoming car? Zap. You react in terror and feel the jolt of fear in your stomach. That thought alone is enough to knock the wind right out of you. How could I think such a thing? I must be going mad. Zap. Zap. All of this self-doubt and fear leads to more anxious thoughts, and you're back in that vicious cycle of anxiety. Other typical examples might be, what if I just jumped off this balcony? What if I actually don't love my partner anymore? What if I did something totally inappropriate right now? Everyone's initial response is to react in fear to such thoughts, and then try to push them away. But this is the key mistake we all make. The harder you push those thoughts away from your mind, the harder they bounce back. Remember as a child when you played with an inflatable beach ball in the pool? Every time you tried to push it down under the water to sit on it, it just kept springing back up with the same force you used to keep it down, often hitting you in the face. The same goes with these intrusive thoughts. You simply can't expect to get peace from them by pushing them away. The only way to get peace is to allow that beach ball to float along beside you. You must stop responding with fear to the thoughts that terrify you and learn to accept and allow them. When I say accept and allow an intrusive thought, I don't mean that you agree with the content of the thought. I mean that you accept the thought for what it is, a random thought generated by an anxious mind and nothing more. Remember, you can't control intrusive thoughts or worries. You can control your response to them. Let's say, for example, that you're cutting the vegetables for dinner and your partner walks into the kitchen and gets something out of the fridge. As they have their back to you, an intrusive thought crosses your mind. What if I lost control and stabbed him or her in the back with this knife? The old you would have felt a jolt of terror punch you in the stomach and maybe even scare you enough to have to put the knife back in the drawer. The new you, using the philosophy of the dare response, doesn't put the knife down but keeps chopping and begins by diffusing the anxious what-ifs. What if I just randomly stabbed him or her with the knife? Oh well, then I'd get locked up. At least I wouldn't have to make dinner anymore. You diffuse the anxious thought by being flippant or humorous towards it, instead of being scared by it. Use whatever response you feel achieves that goal. It's a bit like the way you might respond to a small child who comes into the room dressed as a monster trying to scare you. Oh, you're so big and scary. 
you say with a smile. Then allow the intrusive thought to be present without any resistance. Let it stay for as long as it likes. Remember the beach ball example. If you try to push it down, it will bounce back. So let it be present and then gently move your attention back to what you were doing. On occasion, when you're feeling quite anxious, some thoughts can have a highly persistent nature. I call it a high glue factor, as they really stick to you. This is where you can implement the run towards step of the dare response. Instead of just acknowledging and accepting the thought, you can get excited and demand more of it to really shake yourself loose of its grip. Oh, that's a weird idea of doing something totally inappropriate. Seems very strong today. Okay, so let's have it. I'm going to think about this all day. Come on, let's see if I can think of even stranger things than that. Lastly, engage with whatever is at hand. In this case, you move your attention back to making the dinner, all the while not pushing the thought away. With very intrusive thoughts, you may have to do the above steps several times in a row, each time the intrusive thought grabs a hold of you. Once you remove the emotional response to intrusive thoughts, you normalize them, and they no longer have an emotional pull. When they no longer have a pull, they fall away by themselves naturally, as they've nothing to cling on to. Here's an exercise to help you implement this. Imagine yourself lying on your back in a field, watching the clouds pass overhead. Some of these clouds are white and puffy, while others are dark and ominous. Each cloud represents a thought. You're the passive observer, just watching as each one of them floats by, and they always float by. Watching your thoughts in a detached manner allows you to not judge any of the clouds or get sucked in. You're the silent observer, just watching. Label each thought as you become aware of it. Oh, there's that weird thought X again. Oh well. And then just let it float on past. As they float away, tell some of the more troubling or disturbing thoughts to come back. This is the run towards part. When you get bored doing this, place your attention back on an activity that holds your attention. Please remember, you are not those thoughts. These intrusive thoughts don't represent the real you. They're just the result of your creative imagination mixed with anxiety and exhaustion. In fact, rather than beat yourself up over them, you can congratulate yourself on your creative ability. These thoughts love a good fearful response to keep them going. They're a bit like an annoying bee buzzing about. It's usually only when we try to swat at them that it stings us back. When you let them be, they buzz off in their own time. The mental tension you feel will dissipate very fast if you can adopt this attitude of non-resistant to these intrusive thoughts. I'm not suggesting this is something easy to do. It takes practice to retrain yourself not to respond with fear to such thoughts. As you progress, you'll no longer respond in fear to certain thoughts, but new, strange ones might catch you off guard. If that happens, you need to keep applying and practicing the dare response each and every time they arrive, and never beat yourself up if you don't always do it perfectly. There will be times it'll be easy to do, and then there will be moments when you're tired and feeling vulnerable and the thoughts just get the upper hand. That's just how it is sometimes. Practice and practice, and eventually you'll get there.